Calling all detectives. Suppose you plucked what you thought was a worthless ornament from a discarded Christmas tree and found a priceless gem. What would you do? That is the problem on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. Believe me, Jerry Browning, private detective. Criminals sometimes get caught in the strangest ways. It was about ten o'clock of a cold, crisp evening in mid-January, and I was taking a walk through the quiet, snow-covered streets. The car shot out of a side street only moments after I heard it start. It whizzed past me as I reached the corner and disappeared around a corner. I looked back down the street from which it had come, saw nothing unusual. I was about to resume my walk when halfway down the street my eye picked up a tiny glint of light. What I saw as I drew nearer was a shriveled Christmas tree that some careless householder had tossed out into the street. The glint was coming from one of its branches, evidently from a forgotten ornament that had been discarded along with the tree and was catching light from a street lamp. I smiled, reached up to pluck the ornament, and found myself holding a gold necklace from which hung a big pendant diamond. And as I glanced down, I saw something else at my feet. The empty cartridge from a thirty-two caliber shell. What I thought was an ornament on a discarded Christmas tree turned out to be a diamond pendant necklace. And on the ground, there was an empty cartridge. There was no possible way of telling from which of the houses along the street the tree and the necklace might have come. I walked back to the corner, hailed a cab, and went home. I phoned the police, learned that nobody had reported a lost or stolen necklace, and that no crimes of violence had been reported during the past few hours. The next morning, I took the necklace to George Delman, the jeweler. Magnificent, Mr. Browning, a superb stone matchless. And unless I'm badly mistaken, this is the Rajput diamond from the Eckersall collection. It took less than an hour to learn that the Eckersall collection of gems was insured by the Atlantic Insurance Group. But when I stopped in at their office... No, Mr. Browning, we've had no report of any loss or theft from Mr. Eckersall. This was getting interesting. I drove out to the Eckersall home, way out in the swanky suburb of Linwood. A butler opened the door for me, ushered me into a small waiting room. The man who finally came in to see me introduced himself as Carl Flicker, secretary to Mr. Eckersall. I'm sorry, Mr. Browning. Mr. and Mrs. Eckersall have left for Florida, motoring. I can't say when they'll be back. Can I help you? I nodded, took the necklace from my pocket. Recognize this, Mr. Flicker? He glanced at it. It looks like the Rajput diamond, Mr. Browning. An excellent imitation. It is the Rajput diamond. You think so? Follow me, Mr. Browning. The secretary led me to another room. Opened a massive vault. Walked into it. Came out a few moments later. Here is the Rajput diamond, Mr. Browning. See for yourself. I looked at the necklace glittering in its plush-lined case. It was the exact duplicate of the one I was carrying. I'm sorry, Mr. Browning. I commend you for your honesty and good intentions. But as you see, your necklace is obviously an imitation. Good day, sir. I went back to Delman, the jeweler. Quit kidding me. Is this hunk of rock a real diamond or isn't it? The jeweler fixed the glass in his eye. Who is kidding who, Mr. Browning? The stone you showed me this morning was the Rajput diamond. This is a piece of glass. Nothing. How do you like that? I find a priceless diamond and a smooth-talking, nimble-fingered secretary pulls a switch on me just to save a measly reward. Nobody can do that to me and get away with it. I'd been needing a vacation, and this seemed like a fine time to take it. In Florida. (laughs) 
Getting to see Ronald Eckersall at the exclusive Gulf Beach Club was almost as difficult as breaking into the White House, but I finally managed it. My secretary did that to you, Mr. Browning. I'm astonished. He took out a wallet. How much reward do you feel you are entitled to? Just a second, Mr. Eckersall. I don't care about the reward anymore. I want to know why Carl Flicker pulled that switch on me, why the loss of the diamond was never reported, and how it happened to get lost in the first place. Eckersall frowned, put his wallet away. Browning, I am now inclined to think that Flicker was right after all, that your necklace was an imitation, and that you are a rascal up to some kind of game. Will you leave, or must I call the police? I left and forgot all about a vacation. Instead, I made a lot of inquiries and discovered that Mrs. Eckersall was not registered at the Gulf Beach Club. Her husband was there alone. I took my story and the thirty-two caliber cartridge I'd found near the necklace to the police, and they invited Eckersall in for a few questions. Yes, my, my wife did start on the trip south with me, but uh, we quarreled. She, she left. When did this quarrel take place, Mr. Eckersall, and where? It was the first evening out. We, we were staying at a motel. She... She refused to continue on with me. What was the name of the motel in what town? I don't remember. I'm sorry, Mr. Eckersall. We'll have to hold you on suspicion of murder. I flew back to town. Had Carl Flicker, the secretary, put under arrest. It took him less than an hour to admit that Mr. and Mrs. Eckersall had started on their trip together and that a few hours later, Eckersall had returned alone, saying that his wife had accidentally taken the Rajput diamond along with her and wanted it returned to the vault, which Eckersall personally did. As for the switch, Flicker finally admitted doing that to me in order to spare his employer possible embarrassment. It took patient detective work tracing Eckersall to the little backcountry cabin camp where he spent the first night out and where he buried his wife's body. After that, how he talked... He'd planned to kill his wife, but she became suspicious even before they left the city. Jumped out when he stopped for a light. He followed her, gun in hand, a gun with a silencer on it. He'd thought of everything, except that when she saw death coming, Mrs. Eckersall grabbed at the necklace around her neck and flung it far from her. One last attempt to provide a clue to the death she got a moment later. He hunted for the necklace frantically until he heard my footsteps. Then he shoved his wife's body in the car, drove back home, got the imitation necklace, put it in his vault... Hope that whoever found the stone would keep it. A carefully planned crime to get rid of an unwanted wife. A crime that might possibly have worked. Except for an overzealous secretary. Like I said, anything can trip up a killer. Even the branches of a discarded Christmas tree. <laughs> 